he said, such fear is not uncommon to any normal human being, including Paul, the apostle. As he said in 2 Corinthians 11.3, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. One wonders. A job had really opened a door to the devil. Then why Satan still needed permission for God to remove the hedge of protection, which obviously was still there? People who accuse Job of such atrocities more aptly fit this description of his miserable comforters than diligent students of scripture. Job was a righteous man who suffered for no direct fault of his own, only because a, a suffering God allowed it to be so. The important question is not if or whether the righteous suffer, but why. Why? Do they suffer? A search of the scriptures reveals a number of answers to the above question. Mm -hmm. They ask for those. God sees eternally, whereas we humans see presently. God sees eternally, while we human beings we see presently. Although God is interested in our earthly welfare, He is much more concerned about our eternal well being. His greatest act of love was to offer salvation to men. Not health, not wealth, and not honor. Although it sometimes includes the little three. And this will explain why he allowed the apostles and early Christians to be martyred and to suffer such loss. From an earthly perspective, it would seem that God forsook them. But from an eternal perspective, they are in heaven safe in the arms of the Lord, a much better standing Amen. than the best enjoyment on earth. Amen. As Philippians told us, <clears throat> we read in Philippians 1, 21 to 23, for to me, to live is Christ, yes. and to die is gain. Amen. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which to choose. But I am hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. So true, true, I agree with you. Amen. So God has a much different outlook on this life than we do. He is Alpha and Omega. We are here now. So a lot of what we call suffering is not the same from God's eye. Second consideration, God uses suffering and hardship to produce in us godly character. Job was not perfect in the sense of being sinless before God. Let us get that clear. Nobody is sinless before God, but rather blameless before men. God, through Job's suffering, God exposed him to a lot of pride and self-dependency that was hidden in his heart, as we read in Job 42, 3 to 6. Although this was not the direct cause of Job's misery, God did use his hardship to make him a better person, Amen. one who will be much more capable of handling that which, with which he wanted to bless him. We undergo suffering. Because we often say, carelessly, unknowing what we are saying, that it's when you are about to receive your blessing, or when you are about to step into your destiny, that you have problems, you have difficulties, and you feel like going back. And that's what the Bible is saying. If you are able to survive the turbulent wave, then God can entrust you to better blessing. Amen. But if you drop and run away, you just labor for nothing. Amen. But it will not be our portion today in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a New Testament fact that God uses fiery trials to purify us. As we read in James 1, 2-4. Consider it all joy, yes. my brethren, mm. when you encounter various trials, yes, yes. 
knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. As we read in 1 Peter 1, 6 to 9. In this you greatly rejoice. Even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith be more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Christ Jesus. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your soul. Amen. Amen. A third consideration. Suffering keeps us dependent on God. Judging from some of Job's statements, it would seem that human nature tends to forget rather quickly that all of man's good eventually comes from God. Amen. As we also read in James 1, 16 and 17, man eventually sees himself as the source of these blessings mm. and subconsciously begins to depend on his own ability and possession. Mm. He is indeed of constant reminder that it is God who gives him the power to get wealth, mm. as we also read in Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. What better way to remind him of that than for God to keep him in the state where he has no choice but to trust his creator? Hardship is one way of accomplishing that. We pray for breakthrough. But when that breakthrough comes, how do you hope to handle it? That is the message for us today. Breakthrough will come to us in God's people church by the grace by the name of Jesus. Christ. But when that breakthrough comes through, handle it to glorify God, your creator. Amen. Amen. Then the fourth one, our personal suffering and a source of encouragement to others. God, being eternally minded, is concerned about every generation of human existence. Man is only concerned about his own. The essence of Hebrew 11, that is the faith of faith, the whole chapter of Hebrew 11, we call it the faith hall of faith, which climaxes in 12.1, that is Hebrew 12, chapter 1, or verse 1, is that the faithfulness of the Old Testament saints during suffering was to be an example and encouragement to us through similar reasoning. Jude 3 exhausts us on the basis of the suffering that the apostles and the early Christians went through. We have also been greatly blessed by the stories of Christian martyrs throughout the centuries. It will seem that from God's perspective, mortal suffering is intended to be a source of edification to others as well as future generations who will claim the name of Christ. Amen. And what a rebuke to the devil. It was when he tried to get Job to renounce God. But instead, not only did Job prevail, but now Christians every day have been encouraged and strengthened by Job's perseverance. Mm -hmm. As we also read in James 5.11, our suffering who have similar effects on other believers. Mm -hmm. yes. If the Christians run away from trials, how do you want to persuade those that are still on the road path to believe? Because our Apostle Paul appeared before Governor Agrippa, and Agrippa said, you almost made me a Christian. Mm -hmm. So, the non-believers are looking at us, our way of life, the way we talk, the way we behave, and trying to make up their mind if I can follow these people. Because if you are going to give me a cloth, I want to see the one you are wearing. So if you are going to bring me into the church, I want to see how you are living your own life. So that is what the Bible is saying. So let 
precisely, set the example, and let your life be an inspiration to others. Amen. 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 So what is our attitude? So as believers striving to live in righteousness, our attitude to suffering should not be one of complaining or bitterness or resentment. If it were the result of personal sin, we should be repentant. Otherwise, our prayer should not just be, Lord, let this cup pass from me, but rather, thy will be done. Amen. God's answer will be, my grace is sufficient for thee. Hallelujah. And that is why the righteous do suffer. May God bless his holy word. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.